We are looking at what I call angry spirits. Angry prayers. Angry spirits. Angry prayers. Angry spirits. Angry prayers. And I want you to follow these scriptures very carefully. Let's start from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2. I see so many people here tonight. Your deliverance is attached to tonight's message. So it's better to listen very carefully. 1 Samuel 2.10 This is the aggressive stand of scripture. 1 Samuel 2.10 The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. He shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. When somebody goes into an environment and begins to break things into pieces, you can know that the person is upset, angry. Somebody is running thunder. The person is angry. Why? There are angry spirits, true. Angry spirits. Some too. Some too is a very familiar psalm to all of us. I'm just going to read one or two verses from there. Psalm 2, verse 1. Why do the hidden rage? A raging. And the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the head set themselves. And rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. So there we confirm that the wicked do rage. They act in great anger. Especially when your life refuses to follow their plan. When they say go to the left, you go to the right. When you say you shall not do so so thing, nobody does this in your family. You can't do it, and you decide I will do it. That is why I'm praying for somebody here. That the rage of darkness assigned to limit your destiny shall be scattered tonight in the name of Jesus. The battles that are assigned to make you rise and fall, rise and fall, rise and fall. Let those battles backfire in the name of Jesus. Whether it is convenient for the enemy or not, your life shall disappoint your enemies. It shall disappoint your enemies. It shall disappoint your enemies. In the name of Jesus, let your enemy rule like thunder. The rage of the enemy. The rage. Very angry. They've taken a decision against you. You decided that that decision will not come to pass. So they start raging against you. 
many people come for prayers, come for counseling, and they say, man of God, what have I done? Why is it that the battle is so hot? Why? Why are they raging against me? I'm praying one more time that the rage of darkness to silence you shall be silenced tonight in the name of Jesus. Shall be silenced. Shall be silenced. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let our amen rule like thunder. Revelation chapter 12. Verse 12. Revelation 12, 12. I'll say it one more time. That what we're saying here tonight will be the beginning of the unending laughter of many people. Revelation 12, 12. See what it says. Revelation 12, 12. So therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath that is in great anger because in no earth he had but a short time in no earth he had a short time is raging raging in no earth he had a short time if you are in the choir you are in the singing ministry music ministry there will always be a rage of darkness against you because Lucifer was the first choir master in heaven Lucifer used to lead worship in heaven now that he has been upstage removed Anyone who is in singing ministry, music ministry, now what you are doing is replacing what Lucifer is doing. So he will be jealous against you and give you a hard fight. He's jealous of what you are doing. This is what I used to do. This person is now doing the same thing. So it gives you a hard fight. Said the devil has come down to you having great wrath, great anger, meaning that many spirits that are operating now that are destabilizing men, pushing men here and there, they are acting in great rage, great anger. As your name be announced in heaven that you are next for promotion. As your name be announced in heaven, that is a position that you are going, which is high. As your name be announced in heaven that you are going to be great. I will be a rage against you. Sometimes some people's rage start from the womb. Some as babies the enemy begins to rage against them. I'm praying one more time. Every power raging against your destiny fulfillment with a tenfold amen. Silence them in the name of Jesus. In Mark chapter 9, Jesus gave a command. The enemy was very angry. Huh? Very upset. 
very angry. And what can they now do? They dealt with the person concerned. They dealt with that person concerned. In Mark chapter 9, verse 20. And they brought him unto him. They brought the boy to Jesus. And when he saw him, straight away, the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed for me. Began to, the spirit began to punish the boy immediately. That why, why did you come here? Why did you come here? And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came upon him? And he said, of a child. And often time it has cast him into the fire. And into the waters. To destroy him. But if thou can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. And straight away the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my own belief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. What was the reaction of the spirit? <laughs> when the spirit knew that he was going to lose his accommodation that he has been for many years. And the spirit cried and rent him so. Rent the boy so. And came out of him and was as one dead. In so much that many said he's dead. At the commandment of Jesus, they got mad with anger. They tore the boy, slammed him down, tore his clothes. Deliverance ministers will tell you that many times in deliverance ground, we will have raging spirits. Say, so why did you come here? We told you not to come to this church again. Why have you come here? I've seen many cases like that personally. I've seen a particular case. The spirit said, this girl, this girl, we caused accidents when you were coming here to send you back home. You didn't go back. We caused them to push you into the gutter. Yes, you came here. You came here. See, see, see what is happening now. See what is happening. See what they are doing to us. And we're going to punish you now. And in the full glare of all of us, this lady began to give herself blows blows until her nose was dripping blood. The, the spirit was angry and was punishing her. Until we ask them to go and seize. Beloved, there is a raging battle on. As we speak, it is going on. The battle is going on between the right and the wrong. Light and darkness. Real and counterfeit. Evil 
and good. Negative and positive. The battle is going on. The world itself is a battlefield. Your greatest desire is what some other person hates with perfect hatred. So there's this motion and counter motion about life. That's why they say one man's food is another man's poison. So there's this, the battle is going on. The right and the wrong, the light and darkness, evil and good. Motion and counter motion. Motion and counter motion. Motion and counter motion. All of us wake up in the morning. I will say, I shall not die but live. To declare the works of God. What is the prayer point of the man whose business it is to sell coffee? His prayer point. Let the coffin sell. So somebody is praying for people to die. So he can sell coffins. But this person says, I shall not die. That's motion, counter motion. Say, I don't want to be sick. You're proclaiming it. Good. What is the prayer point of the man who has sent millions and millions to build a hospital? His prayer that patients should come. That people should be sick and come. So that's life. Motion. Counter motion. Motion. Counter motion. So what will make you great? What will improve your life? In another realm. It is annoying them. They are angry. Say, no. No. You cannot do it. Can you close your eyes and raise up your right hand to the heavens? And shout this loud and clear. If you love yourself, let your voice be the loudest here. Pass! Say no to my testimony. In the name of Jesus. You cannot afford to keep quiet. Them we pray. What is the Bible saying? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. The reason is saying be strong in the Lord is because we have a strong enemy. You have to be strong. You have to violent enemy. You too have to be violent. You have an angry enemy. The enemy that is in a rage. Then you to pray the raging prayers. Raging prayers. Raging prayers. We need to understand this very well. And this is why some people get it wrong. Violent place, pray violent prayers. The mysterious place, you deal with them mysteriously. Somebody told me something. Said this man from Nigeria went for a course abroad. And 
and there were plenty of racism there and they got to this uh, lecture room that day and he had heard before that uh, people don't pass the way they should pass in that place so he knew there was a rage against him somewhere although he's an unbeliever he fought back violently he got there said everybody should discuss their race, racism discuss your race discuss racism and this president said well I'm from a place in Nigeria in our village if we don't like somebody what we do that we put our magic portions together then we kill the people with the magic portions so say for example now if I'm a student in the school and a teacher wants to fail me what we do in our village is to put our magic portions together and kill them. When the lecturer had what he said, I was told that when the result of the exam came, they gave me 127 percent. He fought back in his own way. So, if you live in a mysterious environment, you need a mysterious approach. We are in that battle. It's a battle where no one can be neutral. We are born into it. We have no choice. You cannot opt out. There's nowhere to go. The world is not like a bus that you are taking the bus to work. And you, you said I say bus, bus, stop. I want to get off. Stop. No. You are on it. You cannot get off. You are part of it. And the battle is on. It is a fiercely contested battle. Conflicts that has started before we were born. Satan is a trained strategist and an obstinate fighter. He will refuse to acknowledge defeat unless he must. The enemy only yields what he must yield. You, you only yield what you what you what you you propose and you enforce to be taken. He yields only what is taken. He will just give you a grace. Take, just take. Go. No, no. You must contest for it. So, be, so because of that, the ground must be taken step by step. And sometimes when you've taken your ground, they renew attacks against you. So the ground you take to must be shielded away from him. This is where we are. So don't be surprised. And there is a rage against you. Don't be surprised. And there are some powers that don't want you to do certain things. We, have, we see it every day. Say, man of God, man of God, no, no, no. no nobody, nobody prospers in this family. Why are you praying for this person? Nobody prospers. Leave this person, leave us alone. Any padlock of limitation assigned against your staff shall be broken now in the name of Jesus. 
that amen is not loud enough. The amen is not loud enough. So the enemy is in a rage. So what I'm trying to explain quietly, <laughs> there is the rage of the enemy. There are some class of prayers anti-rage prayers. Prayers to discipline and control the angry spirits. When you see the Bible talking about rage, rage means extreme anger. Explosive anger. It means violent agitation. Bitterness. Explosion. Fury. Mad rampage. Great violence an anger of furious intensity rage this is part of the reason why you must always pray for your pastors pray for those who pray for others a person comes into the counseling room followed by another person Followed by another person carrying a coffee. And you say, Go back. Say, No. I've been asked to put her inside the coffee. Is that why you are following her here? Say, Yes. I want to be sure that she's delivered into the coffin. That that, that is his assignment. It's okay. You can't put her in the coffin there. Okay, I will, I will go outside and wait for her. Go outside and wait for her. See, you're not even going to go outside. We're going to destroy the coffin. Anger. Lose their temper and begin to shout and begin to scream. The enemy has attached a demonic guard for that person. I'm praying for anybody here. Any follow, follow spirit. Powers that are just following you about to destroy the good things that you're supposed to experience with a 21 fold amen. They must die now in the name of Jesus. do not know that evil spirits they act in a rage they get really really angry you know they are the owner of the spirit of anger when they act in a rage they exhibit unthinkable madness and wickedness wickedness the kind of thing you see what kind of wickedness is this pray for a strange case some years back she has three children three girls the reason they came for prayer was because it's not that she didn't have boys the first, she had one, the first born was a girl. Second born was a boy. 
Immediately they said, push. Push. And the head of that boy came out of her body. Right in the maternity world. And unseen force got it. And bearded the child. The head was full. The nurse ran away. Everybody ran away. Nobody could understand. But they were not going to places where they have understanding. She got pregnant. This time, another girl. Nothing happened to the girl. You know, fine. They kept trying again. This next child was a boy. This time, the same thing that happened to the first boy happened again. He was beheaded on arrival. Now, what kind of wickedness is this? Why is this? Why is there this rage against male children in that family? Why are they attacking the woman? It's a rage against her. I'm praying for somebody here one more time. Every rage assigned to silence your destiny shall backfire tonight in the name of Jesus. So, evil spirits do act in a rage. And they do it with un unthinkable madness. And wickedness. See what they did to that boy. Even before Jesus, see what they did. They tore him to pieces, threw him on the floor. But in spite of the fact that they are in a rage, they do the evil things they are doing with fullest intelligence and purpose. It may look scatter scatter, but they know what they are doing. They have they are doing it with fullest intelligence and with purpose. They are fully aware of what they are doing. They operate under serious rage and malice and hatred. Have you ever seen a mad cow? That's how they look in the spirit. When they are angry. That's what they do. Unless you know how to deal with it. This is how they act as if they have no intelligence. But, but they, op they operate willful intelligence. They act with determination. They act with fury. They act with undeviating persistence. They keep doing it. And they are very skillful in what they do. So we need the angry prayers. We need the anti rage prayers to be able to silence this. Only the anti rage prayers can arrest these spiritual jailers that have been holding people in bondage. This is the prayer that will hold the victory of Jesus Christ over the host of evil in the place. Just as Moses held up his hand, or the victory is won. So the raging prayer holds up victory of Christ over Satan until victory is won. These anti rage prayers, they are targeted and directed to the host of hell. Read your Bible well. 
all the miracles Jesus performed can be found in the Old Testament. All the miracles. The only thing that Jesus did that was never done before by any prophet was the way he dealt with demons. Evil spirits recognized him. So any present day believer <laughs> with no knowledge of how to pray some warfare prayers is a joker. And any church you are going to and nobody is telling you that life is about you. Nobody is teaching you prayers. They are teaching you praises. It's okay. They teach you worship. It's okay. There is a room for all that. But there is a room for somebody like Paul facing by Jesus. Sit down, child of the devil. Thou enemy of all righteousness. Will thou not perverting the will thou not stop perverting the righteous way of the Lord? So behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you. The hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord is upon you. And you shall be blind for a season. The Bible says immediately blindness settled upon him. And he was looking for somebody to lead him by the hand. Those are violent reactions to violent enemies. I never cease to get amazed when I read the Bible. And I read the story of the demonic man, the demonic man in the garden of in, in Gadarenes. Six thousand demons in one man. Six thousand. Six thousand in one man. If the person was to go for deliverance, I wonder how many deliverance he would do to get rid of six thousand demons. This gives us an indication how much demonic load a human being can cope with and still be standing and walking about. The enemies do act in a rage. And you too must stretch out your hand in a rage. If you live in a mysterious world, you need a mysterious approach to survive. There are some prayers. We can pray them gently. No problem. You can even pray them without raising your voice. No problem. There's room for that. But Jesus taught us something. Study the life of Jesus. When Jesus got to the tomb of Lazarus, he prayed two kinds of prayers. He first of all wept. Wept. He wept because the resurrection and the life was standing there. And they were talking, they were thinking he cannot resurrect a man. He wept at their unbelief. Then when you know stop that. He spoke to the father. Gently. It's God is talking to now. He's talking to his father. He said, father, I thank you. Well, you always hear me. So this, so this is that I hear. I don't know that you have sent me. He spoke gently to the father. Thanking the father. The same Jesus. Who spoke gently just now to his father when he turned to the grave he turned now to the spirit of the grave the bible says he cried
cried with a loud voice. Lazarus, come forth. What necessitated that change of reaction and change of volume? Because now he's dealing with the enemy. He's asking the grave to release the man. So when there's room for those, there's room for those kind of prayers too. You don't pacify the enemy. They, they are not pacifiable. Today. We're going to stop here. Continue next time. Today. I want you to prepare your mind for the few prayers we're going to pray. We should bring you massive testimonies. Bow down your heads where you are. But you see, if you're in this meeting now, you are not born again. You have not tested under the life to Jesus. It will, it will even be very dangerous to pray the prayers we're going to start praying. So wherever you are, while all eyes are closed, just rise to your feet. Find a way to the altar here so that you can surrender your life to Jesus and then you can be in a good place to pray the prayers we are going to pray tonight. So wherever you are, while all eyes are closed, just rise to your feet, find a way to the altar very quickly to surrender your life to Jesus. me the cross There are precious Congratulate you. You've taken the most important decision in life. Bow down your heads where you are. Say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. As from today, I say bye bye to the devil. I enter into the kingdom of light. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, I thank you for your children here. Let your hand be upon them for good. Lay your hands upon their destinies. Today, they have, they have surrendered their lives to Jesus. Let their lives no longer remain the same. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Open your eyes and look at me here. God bless you. You've taken the most, the most wonderful and powerful decision in your life. Just see the pastor over there. Just follow this pastor for a few minutes and you can join us later. Thank you, Jesus. On the mountain, in the valley, on the land, and in the sea. On the mountain, in the valley, on the land. The Hallelujah. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. The Lord is good forevermore. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. The Lord is good forevermore. On the mountain, in the valley, on the land, and in the sea. On the mountain, in the valley.
has come. The first thing I want to encourage you to do is to get very, very angry in your spirit. The people who should not get angry is those who believe they are where God wants them to be now. But those who don't know that this cannot be my final bus stop, I have a far place to go. Those who know that any time they want to go forward, something is pulling them backward. They should pray the way they've never prayed before. And as you pray this first prayer, if you're in this meeting, like nobody needs to tell you. You know that in the family you came from, they have done a polygamous brain exchange. They used to say, Yes, this person was very brilliant in primary school. That's very brilliant. But now, gone. All of a sudden, that intelligence went down. Find your way to this altar. And if you are at the altar, pray with fire and with power. Can everybody shout this loud and clear? Every witchcraft rage. Ego is my destiny. Death. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. The powers of my fathers are powers of my mothers are raging against me. Continue, 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 continue. Yes, you are getting there, you are getting there. Continue. In Jesus' name we pray. Say every problem. Are sign to consume good things in my life. Can you shout it loud? You are alive. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, open your mouth and say it. Problems are signed to consume good things in my life. Command them to die now, command them to die now in the name of Jesus.
Jesus name we pray now with the loudest voice here tonight can you shout this loud wherever my glory has fallen be lifted now in the name of Jesus